Now when we look inside someone's mouth, we might see inflammation. And inflammation is basically redness and bleeding. So one of the things we do is we can say that someone has localized inflammation or we can say someone has generalized inflammation. And to do this, we'll look at some examples. But how do you know if someone has localized versus if someone has generalized? Well, you you have to come up with a number. If it if less than 30% of the um, areas in the mouth are inflamed, we say this person has localized inflammation. If more than 30% of the areas in the mouth are inflamed, we say that this person has generalized inflammation. So let's look at this. Let's say we look at this picture over here and we just see inflammation over here and you can see it's quite red over here and let's hypothetically say that the inflammation is only okay, I know we also see inflammation here but let's hypothetically say the inflammation is only in the anterior region okay so in this person it's only in the anterior region and this person is only in the anterior region this would be considered localized it's considered localized because it's less than 30% of the amount. Another way you can look at this is you can bring up a calculator. So I'm actually going to bring up a calculator for you guys to see. And let's say this person has 32 teeth. And let's say um, we have, so let's say over here, let's just say hypothetically six of the areas. Okay, so six areas are um, inflamed. So what we would do is we would take six areas which are 16 really that are inflamed and i'm going to divide this by let's say 32 teeth because they have 32 teeth this means so if i look at this this is a number you times that by 100 and you get 18.75 percent 18.75 percent is less than 30 percent so this would be considered localized because it is less than 30 percent Usually we just eyeball it, we guesstimate, we're like this is only in a selected region, hence it is localized, it is less than 30% of, of the mouth. So again, this is an example of localized inflammation because it's just in a selected area. But we can also see sometimes that we would have generalized inflammation like this example here. See how we see inflammation and redness everywhere, you can see it's red. The gums are bright red over here. The gums, um, if I were to probe this area, this gum would definitely bleed. So because I see redness and inflammation everywhere, this is an example of generalized inflammation. One last thing that I want to point out to, um, to you guys is that when we're looking at inflammation, the inflammation could be on the papillary only so on the papilla only which is known as papillary inflammation or papillary gingivitis the inflammation could be on the margin and when we say margin we're looking at um, i'll show you a picture but we're looking at the inflammation only on the margin and papilla or the inflammation could be diffuse or diffuse and we'll look at what that means but diffuse or diffuse basically means the inflammation is everywhere it's on the margin it's on the papilla it's on the attached gingiva it's going all the way down to the mucogingival junction so let's look at some pictures so that we can understand this better this is an example of diffuse inflammation now diffuse inflammation is where we see inflammation on the margin we see inflammation on the um papilla as well and we see inflammation going all the way down into the attached gingiva all the way up to the mucogingival junction the mucogingival junction is this line over here okay so see how it's red everywhere it's not just red on, on only on the papilla or the margin it's going up to the attached gingiva this is why it's considered diffuse inflammation let's look at another example let's look at this example here here looks pretty healthy over here at the bottom on the mandible but if you look at the maxilla do you see or the upper gums do you see how just the papilla is inflamed the margins are fine i don't see any redness along the margins i don't see any uh, redness on the attached gingiva i only see redness on the papilla so this is an example of a papillary inflammation where only the papilla is inflamed and lastly let's look at this picture here I see marginal inflammation and the reason why I see marginal inflammation is because I see redness along the margin. If you look at the gums, it's also puffy 
along the margin. So marginal inflammation looks at when the papilla and the margin is inflamed, we say that this person has marginal inflammation. So again, let's recap. Papillary inflammation is just the papilla is inflamed. Marginal inflammation is the papilla and the margin is inflamed. And lastly, diffuse inflammation is where everything is inflamed. The papilla, the margin, and the attached gingiva is all inflamed and red.